I agree totally. I do want to point out to our listeners, because uh, one thing that I try to do, it helps me learn. Um, I have noticed that many white people who have been on this program uh, have initially scoffed at the definition because they have said it implies that white people are consciously participating in this system, and uh, the system of white supremacy does not require conscious participation. And I like to be very clear in pointing out that my definition, uh, at no point in that definition do I talk about whether or not people are consciously doing this. What I am saying is that at the end of the day, when we, whether we call it institutional racism or system of white supremacy, what we're talking about is people who say that they are white, who uphold, maintain, expand, and refine the global system of white domination of people they say are not white. I think when you boil everything down, that's what we're talking about when we say a global system of racism, white supremacy, or institutional racism. Do you think that is an accurate way to describe what we're talking about? Yeah, I think I, I do. I think that if you take out, I, I think that what I was noticing was the language of sort of dedicated to, which <clears throat> suggested some kind of, you know, self-consciousness to kind of dedicating yourself to that end. But, <clears throat> yeah, I think if you, you know, take that word out, I, I, I think you're right. I think um, that we have to start from that point and and then comes the hard work of analyzing, you know, <laughs> how do we get here and how do we move forward? I think the word uh, dedicated uh, is vitally important. And I, in fact, as we go along, I intend to evidence uh, from your work what blood won't tell that white people who practice white supremacy have shown consistent dedication to maintaining, expanding, and refining the system of white supremacy. I think you document that very well in your book, and I think yeah, you wouldn't have. Actually, I think you will find plenty of evidence. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. For that. I uh, want to clarify, because this is something I have noted um, with many white people who discuss racism, white supremacy, and I think this is very important, because uh, this is not anything personal with you. I've seen a myriad of white people do this. Uh, I suspect it could be conscious, but maybe it's unconscious. Uh, but that's why I'm pointing it out. Uh, I have seen where white people will concede a point if a non-white person asks a question, and then they will talk uh, so that what they originally conceded kind of gets diluted. Uh, and I think it's very important that non-white people, because non-white people tend to be a little bit confused about how racism, white supremacy works. Very important. White privilege is the product of the system of white supremacy. We had agreement on that. I think that's very important. I didn't want the listeners to miss that. And I also wanted to point out, um, it's been my experience that white people consistently are very comfortable talking about um, you don't have to be conscious to maintain a system of white supremacy. And that's why I want to hop to your book. Uh, you show in your book, you evidence a long legacy of conscious racism white supremacy where people were very aware of what they're doing. In fact, you have a chapter in your book where you talk about practicing racism, white supremacy, and what it boiled down to was you as a white person, part of your duty is to know how you are supposed to react, relate to non-white people and as inferiors in a system of white supremacy. Is that, and you can call me, am I reading your book correctly? No, I think sense? that's absolutely right. And, okay. and another piece of it that, uh, that I think is important is the section, um, especially my chapter on Mexican-Americans in Texas and California, where a, a big part of what I saw in the record was people acting very consciously in a racist way, learning to speak the language of neutrality and, you know, saying, oh, this isn't about race, it's about culture, or it's about language, or, you know, we have all kinds of other reasons for why we're putting kids in these other worse schools. Um, so I, 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 you're absolutely right. There's lots of evidence of very conscious um, creation of race and uh, and racial subordination and learning to couch that in neutral racial racially neutral language I absolutely agree I was uh, I was hoping actually I wanted to ask before we hop into uh, specific parts of your book um, I wanted to ask because you said uh, that you 
benefit from white privilege, but I just wanted to ask, do you think that you consciously and or unconsciously, do you think you participate in mistreating non-white people directly and or indirectly? That's a really hard question to answer. I, I don't think I do consciously. Um, unconsciously? Uh, it certainly, you know, it's certainly possible. Um, I, for me, I think the most difficult um, issue that I navigate in my life, and I think this is common to professional uh, professional women and mothers of all races, actually, um, it, it's as much a, it's a class and a race issue. Um, is immigrant, non-white women working as domestic workers to help care for our homes and kids so that we can function as a, with a job and a family and, uh, and trying to figure out how to have those relationships um, without practicing white supremacy I think is very it's probably the biggest challenge I face. I'm sure I don't always, um, you know, handle it the right, the, the best possible way. I, it's almost impossible, in fact, given the structural situation of people migrating for domestic work um, and the nature of the work. I think it'd probably be impossible to have a truly, you know, uh, to, to take it out of the system of white supremacy. But within those constraints, you know, I try to, you know, pay very high wages, et cetera, benefits, you know, treat as a professional relationship. Very, I think it's, that's very challenging. Uh, we had, we've had lots of white people on the program at this point. I just want to point out, I know it can be difficult, but uh, being as, as honest as we can bear, as Dr. Robert Jensen said when he was on the program, many white people have come on this program and said that they, they believe it is uh, absolutely impossible to imagine how you could be a white person in the system of white supremacy and not participate in mistreating non-white people. They just can't even imagine how that would be possible. Even the people who say that they want to work against racism, white supremacy, uh, Tim Wise has been on the program and admitted to being a racist white supremacist. Uh, Dr. Martin Kevorkian, who suggested your book, uh, admitted to being a white supremacist. Uh, Matthew Jacobson, who authored uh, Whiteness of a Different Color, very similar to your work, uh, he was on the program, uh, also said, just can't imagine what it would be like to be a white person and to not participate in that system in some way. Uh, and actually, I want to want to hop to your book because you give many, many illustrations. Being a white person means their definition, and white people have said this explicitly, you participate in mistreating non-white people. Um, from the chapter in your book, you talk about the common sense of race. Uh, you illustrate many examples where uh, someone carted off to uh, court uh, during the 19th century um, their whiteness in question, and many times uh, this centered around sexual intercourse, very important theme in your book, controlling sexual conduct of non-white and white people. Uh, many times you talked about how uh, the courts uh, would even decide against a white person if it meant insisting that white people were very aware of who is white, who is not white, and how you're supposed to function with that person. The courts were very resistant to even possibly conceding that a white person could be ignorant about racism, ignorant enough that they could not discriminate between who is white and who is not.